Before we know it, we're feeling just as critical and just as angry as our spouse was, and we're starting to act just like them. And the end result is that our response to our spouse is just as unhealthy as their criticism of us. And it's you and me, babe, whatever comes, knowing Welcome to A Better Us and welcome to our home. So it's been said that marriage is the only activity where the rookies tend to do better than the veterans. Hmm. How does that make sense? No. The longer we're married, shouldn't we be getting better at it? I know, really. Like, isn't that the case in sports? The guys who have been around longer are the ones who are setting all the records, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But unfortunately, in marriage, as the years go by, we often tend to slack off from doing mm -hmm. our best. Well, today, Dr. Gary Chapman, the Five Love Languages guy, he's with us to share his research into the second half of marriage and the couples who don't just survive, but they thrive. You know, even us older couples, we can thrive. And we'll also hear from Dr. Mike on the beach as he talks about an all too common issue in marriage, criticism. Mm, and how actually it's our response to that criticism that makes all the difference. And our kitchen couples will have a lot to say about all of this. From their own kitchens via Zoom. Right. And we'll have CFL football great Mike Pinball Clemens and his wife Diane. Recording artist Dan McCauley and his wife Danielle. And youth and children's pastors Eric and Kara Maines. It's going to be a good discussion, so come on in. I want to talk today about the second half of marriage. People ask me, well, how do you know if you're in the second half? If you're 50, you're in the second half, unless you're gonna to live to be 120. <laughs> uh, I, I teamed up with Dr. Harold Myra, and we wrote a book on the second half of marriage called Married and Still Loving It. And what we did was interview scores and scores of couples trying to find out what are the characteristics of couples who thrive in the second half and those who just survive in the second half. And I want to share those characteristics with you. First of all, they learn how to keep love alive, many times by speaking the five love languages. That is, learning to speak the love language of the other person so that the emotional need for love is met. That's fundamental. Secondly, they learn how to deal with their failures by apologizing and forgiving each other. You won't have a long-term healthy marriage. You won't be thriving if you don't deal with your failures. And then they learn how to not only to accept the things that irritated them in the earlier years, but they learn how to laugh about those things. If I could illustrate from my own marriage, you know, uh, when we got married, I had visions that we would get up early in the morning and we would have breakfast together and we would pray together. After we got married, I found out my wife didn't wake up till 10 o'clock. I didn't say she didn't get up, I said she didn't wake up. <laughs> so that little vision went out of my mind. Well, recently she had to get up one morning really early and she was in the kitchen with me. And when I turned, I bumped my head in a door that she left open. And then I went over on the other side and I hit my arm on another door she had left open. And then I turned around to get the knife to cut my grapefruit and I almost tackled her. And I started laughing. I said, Carolyn, I'm so glad you're not a morning person. I don't ever have these problems when I'm here by myself. <laughs> So you learn to accept things about your spouse that they're not going to change or cannot change, and you laugh about them. And then commitment. Those who thrive in the second half are committed to each other. They believe marriage is a covenant, not just a contract. I'll do this if you do that. Oh, no, no, because you, you will leave the marriage if you have a contract marriage. They believe it's a covenant, and they're committed to each other. That's why they get up. They're resilient after they have problems, and they keep working at it until they learn answers. Then many of them, that commitment is based on a strong faith in God. They have confidence that there's more to marriage than just you and me, that God is with us, that God has plans for us. God wants to use us. He's gifted each of us, and we want to help each other, encourage each other to be everything that God intended us to be. These are the couples that are thriving in the second half. And then the last one I want to mention is that they keep adventure in the marriage. You know, we tend to be creatures, we get into a rut, and we do the same old thing over and over. But those couples that are thriving, they keep adventure in their marriage. 
Now, for some of you who are older, that may mean just driving a different way to the grocery store, okay? <laughs> you go the same old route every time, or maybe going to a different restaurant. Most of us have three or four restaurants we go to the same every time. Try something different. Maybe you won't like it. My wife and I went to one recently. We didn't like it, and we said, well, that was an adventure, but we're not going to do that again, you know? <laughs> you keep adventure in the marriage. Maybe go back and visit your honeymoon site. My wife and I planned to do that. We got there, and they'd torn, they'd torn the hotel down. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we still had an adventure. Maybe it's to take a train ride to anywhere. Just how long has it been since you've been on a train? Or maybe if you're still able, maybe do a bicycle ride together. You have to borrow the bicycles. Maybe you don't have them or you can rent them. You do something different. If you keep adventure in your marriage, you are likely to be thriving in the second half. You know, my desire has always been that marriage should get better and better, not become mundane and stale. And I believe if you will take these challenges I've given you today, you will thrive in the second half of your marriage. Great hearing from Dr. Chapman again, such yeah. a great teacher on marriage insights. And thanks for joining us, everyone. And also, we are joined by our kitchen couples in their own kitchens. Right. Uh, this is a great setup here. We've got Mike and Diane. We've got Eric and Kara. We've got Dan and Danielle. And so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, and I've got my mug, mug a better us mug. mug. All right. Now, of all of us here, <laughs> There's, there's two of us kitchen couples who are actually in the second half of marriage, right? There's two of us, um, Mike and Diane and, and Ron and myself. I know we've been married 36 years. Mike and Diane, how long have you guys been married? 28. 28 wow. years. Now, I think, I think the young ones, the young'uns that are here with us, they, yes. they're not in the second half of marriage, but they've got a lot they can learn from us and our mistakes and, and the things that we think that we can pass on to them. What do you guys think? We're all ears. We're here. We're ready to listen. <laughs> well, I think the very first thing is you don't go through marriage you grow through marriage, right? So uh, as we continue on this pace, right, we, we kind of have a lot of stuff happen. And at this point, a lot of garbage can build up. And if we haven't been working through those things, if we haven't been growing through it, right, there, there certainly can be a time where, where your relationship just becomes stale. Uh, we recently, as he was talking about uh, uh, doing things and going back, we, we uh, have had six places that we've lived in. Toronto. And so we went through doing, you know, everything was slow at the pandemic. I think it was the one of the first days she kind of went out and actually got in the car. But we kind of just drove through all of the six places. We drove by every house that we have lived in since we've been here and just kind of reminisce a little bit, uh, doing those kind of things to re-engage ourselves. But for me, the real thing is to remember, don't, we, we, we don't just go through this, right? We grow through it. We continue to learn adapt. And when we talk about the love languages, sometimes by this time in marriage, those languages are modified a bit. So yeah. we have to check in and make sure That's that right. we know and, and, uh, and we're doing the, the right thing still. And I would say to make sure you give your spouse the right to complain without paying a price. <laughs> right? Because a lot of times, you know, as we grow, you know, we, we have to be careful at, you know, as we were talking about earlier, how we communicate mm -hmm. and how we say things to one another. And I think uh, I think that's a really good quote uh, because it, it can touch every single one of us. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we pay attention to those things and make sure that we listen again to our uh, spouse or significant other. Mm -hmm. That's good. She's so yeah. smart. <laughs> So what you young ones, we want to hear from you guys. Like, what, what do you think about this whole second half of marriage? Which young ones? Are we still in the young well, we're category? We're not the young ones, technically. We, maybe, but yeah. <laughs> we're younger. It's young is relative, and I feel young. So I, I was going to say, I like, uh, I like to where he's talking about kind of doing things new and keeping them fresh, kind of reinventing your marriage. I, I, was, I was thinking maybe a silly example, but I was thinking of how celebrities and artists and musicians and actors kind of like reinvent themselves, those who have a long career. Because you like, like I was thinking of Tom Cruise, long career, awesome, you know, a, a great actor. Every movie is hair is a little different. Like, 
Like every 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 Mission Impossible, his hair is a little different. The first hair, he's kind of got the buzz cut. The first movie, the the second Mission Impossible, he's got the long flowy hair. And so you're like, it's Tom Cruise. I knew what to expect. But oh, who's this da dashing young fellow? You know, it's got that little bit of mystery to it. There's a, he just reinvents himself as he goes. He still he keeps what's awesome and he changes his hair. So it could be that simple little thing in your marriage. You keep what's awesome, and I don't know. If we're, we're, you're 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 kind of like your hair is awesome. It's always been the same, but maybe it's not your hair. But it's something. You're doing something fresh. You're changing it up. So this is interesting because now I know he's looking at hair when we're watching a movie. Normally I watch everything like <laughs> no, that so and miss much. the content and he gets me in trouble. Now I know. <laughs> he hates the bald actors. It's just like not even worth watching that movie. <laughs> I'm only watching Tom Cruise's hair. He's uh, watched a lot of Tom Cruise apparently. Yeah. You know, I loved that he said um, that marriage is a covenant, not just a contract. It is a commitment between us too, but also a triangle. This way, God is involved. And you know, so many of us um, out in the world, and you see it in movies, I'm sure Tom Cruise has said it, that we, uh, we think that marriage is all about, um, you know, until what, what we get or what we want ends. But really, it's um, not about receiving love, it's about a commitment to continually grow and show and give love over and over again and uh, you know no matter what no matter what's hitting your life a pandemic or anything like that uh, you're in it for the long haul not just you two but with the Lord yeah and I took away like what your mindset at like he was talking about thriving so I was like are we thriving or are we surviving mm -hmm. and if we want the longevity we want to be thriving not just surviving like this isn't supposed to be um, like boring or whatever we're supposed to thrive in marriage yeah. and so i thought about that um and i also thought about the mindset of covenant over contract and so it's just like where are you where's your mindset you want to hit the long-term goal and so how do you do that Kara, i love that because really what you need to do when you're in the first half of marriage is have a future focus mm -hmm. of what you want your marriage to look like in the second half to really think about what do we want to look like as a couple in 10 years 20 years 30 years and then do the work now to make that happen and that's really the bottom line and have a future yeah. focus it is worth the effort mm -hmm. believe us and everyone else that puts the effort into it yeah. and dr chapman he's a pretty good one to listen to too absolutely so this has been great thanks everyone for your input and there's more a better us coming right. up stay with us that really hurt me yeah, and, and so sometimes we're honest and, and raw in that way, but, but how we respond, our respond ability, I think really is the key to the maturity of our relationship and our happiness. Exciting news. A Better Us is now on YouTube. You can watch what you missed or re-watch and share segments you love whenever you want. Just search A Better Us TV on YouTube and you'll find our channel full of great marriage encouragement, ready and waiting for you. And be sure to click subscribe and ring that bell for notifications so you'll always get the latest and greatest marriage content as we continue to upload more A Better Us videos all the time. So we all dream of getting married and spending the rest of our life in wedded bliss that makes us feel secure and, and like deeply loved, right? That's the dream. Now I know we don't, we're not naive. We don't imagine everything's gonna be perfect, but we think as we encounter the trials and brokenness and tribulations of our world that we're gonna be able to communicate with our spouse in a way that, you know, kind of communicates dignity and, and value to one another. I think it's what we all want. Unfortunately, that's not how it always plays out in most of our marriages, right? It's not uncommon for both members of a marriage to respond to disagreements and differences of opinion with a critical, judgmental, blaming, angry tone. So the question is, how do you respond when you start to get that criticism coming back from your spouse? What do you do? A lot of us have a stress response to criticism. Like we kind of freak out inside. And what do we do? Fight, fly, or freeze, right? You ever heard of the fight or flight? It's fight or flight or freeze. And when we do that, 
before we know it, we're feeling just as critical and just as angry as our spouse was, and we're starting to act just like them. And the end result is that our response to our spouse is just as unhealthy as their criticism of us. Does this sound familiar? I think it does because we all do it at one time or another. So my question to you now is how should we respond to the criticism of our spouse? I'm gonna give you some ideas here. Number one, you've got to see the criticism of your spouse as a reflection of your spouse and their issues and whatever's going on in their life. So resist the temptation to assume that your spouse's negativity has anything to do with your value as a person. Instead, you've got to find a way to respond to your spouse's criticism in a way that's healthy, that doesn't reflect their negative mood and their negative stress level. So when you see your spouse's negativity, you've got to see that as a reflection of something going on inside of them. Number two, you've got to tell your spouse about you. You've got to tell them what's going on inside of you when they get negative and critical. Instead of joining them in that negativity, you've got to say something like, you know what? I have a hard time actually listening to you when you get intense and critical like this. I just, I can't do it. Use I statements. I feel blank when blank. I feel very uncomfortable when you come at me in this kind of criticism. Number three, set and hold your boundary. Do not try to talk your spouse out of being critical. That's not your job. All you've got to do is set a boundary and say, you know what? I'm not going to keep going in this conversation until you can just calm yourself down, until we can have a healthy, productive conversation. And the more you're able to think differently under that kind of stress, the more you're going to be able to see your spouse's criticism as something that's going on inside of them. Does that make sense? So ultimately, we want to be in relationships where we're free to be ourselves, right? And that means that we've got to let others be free to be themselves too. Even if they have an issue with criticism, you've got to let your spouse have their issues. And when you can find a way to do this without responding in your own criticism, in your own anger, your own negativity, then it becomes less of a marital problem, less of a problem between you guys, and more of a problem for the person that is feeling negative and critical to begin with. And so look, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing when you can care about your spouse, but refuse to take the blame for their critical and unhealthy responses. That's gonna be an awesome moment in your marriage. So this well-boundaried response that we're talking about, I can promise you this, it will crush the power of criticism in the life of your marriage. And at the very least, it's gonna allow you to remove your need to be reactive and any criticism or blame leveled by your spouse. Okay, well, we are back in the kitchen with our kitchen couples in yeah. their kitchens. And we always love hearing from Dr. Mike on the beach. He always has such practical stuff to talk mm. about. And today is no exception. It's all about criticism. Yeah, which is a big one in marriage it because it's so yeah. easy in the heat of the moment to blurt out something or, or to, to attack and then you're in attack and defensive mode and, that, and then there's the, the fight and flight stuff that Dr. Yeah. Mike was talking about. Uh, but I remember Dr. John Gottman, who is probably the world's foremost researcher on marriage, uh, he said there's something called the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which means if, if you see any of these exhibited regularly in your marriage, the end might be near. Ooh, not necessarily near, but it could be near. So you got to take Please, note. But his number one on that list was criticism. So Ooh. it's important to deal with this big time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I thought that segment was okay. I thought it, would, it could have been better if maybe there was little, the beach was a little sunnier or maybe if there was a sandcastle in the back or something. Oh, oh sorry. I'm being critical. Oh, sorry. I'm just joking. Just joking. Or if we were there. <laughs> it's so important not to be critical. You know what? Um... That, that reminded me of kind of a teaching we've done a little bit in the past uh, on uh, the idea of being codependent. 
And and honestly, before a better us, I didn't know what that meant. But I've learned from through a better us what codependency is, and that idea that we can we can catch something, that we can be infected, if you will. Interesting in this day and age when we're talking about catching things from each other, how you can catch emotions, you can catch a bad day, you can kind of uh, if you're not careful, let what maybe is going on that might be negative inside your spouse kind of infect you, and and, and they say something, and then well, well yeah, well you're, th-, and then we're throwing bombs back and forth, and and it's an interesting dichotomy in a marriage where the two are one and yet at the same time there needs to be this like firewall if you will that kind of doesn't let if something for me to be able to realize okay she's having a bad day or 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 something and 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 not just kind of stoop to that level and let it become just this criticism thing so just that sense to realize that I don't know, could be something could have gone wrong in her life. Hurt people hurt people. And and rather than just, you know, start engaging in that, to have that little bit of separation. That's what jumped out at me and and I've been learning that as by being a part of a better us, which is I'm thankful for. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so now that he's said all that, I'm going to admit on national television, I'm the critical one out of out of the two of us. There Ooh. I said it. <laughs> I'm saving this episode. <laughs> For future use, great. Well, but something happened recently when I was being critical to him and criticizing him. Um, He pointed something out back at me, and, you know, I got thinking about it, and I was like, you know what, he's right. And there were some things that I was doing and um, things that I was thinking that were contributing to the problem. And um, so when I adjusted my behavior and my attitude, things started gelling and I wasn't so seeing, you know, so much of what he was doing wrong. And so I would say this to couples, allow your spouse to speak truth to you because that's what marriage is all about is iron sharpening iron, which hurts, of course, but ultimately it's making us sharper and better. Um, So we need to be willing uh, to swallow our pride and allow um, this guy or this girl um, to speak truth into you because it will make you better. Mm. Mm -hmm. And guys, know this, how, how, how well they take it? is in in great part due to how we respond. It is how we respond to, because often criticism, boom, we want a counterpoint, right? Instead of counterpointing, right? How about let's just, ah, usa, take it in. And, and then the way we respond to them, sometimes we can respond in a way, not trying to counterpoint and say, well, you did. It says, well, you know, I, there may be some truth to that, hun, and, and um, you know, I I, uh, I I probably need to get better, or hey, you know, um, that uh, that 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 really hurt me. And, and and so sometimes we're honest and, and raw in that way. But but how we respond, our respond ability, I think, really is the key to the maturity of our relationship and our happiness. Yeah, and uh, Matthew seven talks about judge not uh, that you not be judged, and it talks about the plank, how you see the plank in someone's eye and not see the plank in your own eye. And so uh, for me, like Danielle was talking about, I can be the critical one and I can be the, you know, throw the criticism without seeing my own criticism. And I always have to catch myself because it's easy to see someone else's fault and not see your own fault. So it's it's, um, very... um, it's important that we pay attention to those things as a, a couple so that we can build each other up and not tear each other down. Yeah, there is a there's a technique that Dr. Mike on a beach mentioned that I don't think actually works in our situation because he said, you know, hold your ground and, and uh, tell them to calm down and that you're not going to talk, you're not going to have that conversation until they're at a certain level. But like, I don't think like in the history of calming down, being told to calm down, I don't think that's ever worked to actually calm someone down. Like if, if Karen and I were in a discussion and uh, I was just like, you need to calm down or else we're not having this conversation. Like, I don't think it's going to work. In our, and maybe that's, maybe that's like a young marriage versus, you know, more mature and, and know each other for years and years. Uh, and you just, you know how to talk to that person and how to, to, to respond and everything. But yeah, I, I'm not sure if that would work in our situation. Well, I think, I think like you were saying, it's good to have boundaries, like Dr. Mike was saying, boundaries in marriage. 
but it's the way you present those boundaries. Yeah. You don't, you like, like, you know, Dan was saying the codependency thing. You don't want all the bad moods he's having to affect me. Like there's a boundary there where I can let him have his bad mood, but it's not going to bring me down too. And, but it's and, the way you present and it. You wouldn't want to say you need to calm down because that's one of those you statements that yeah. just causes the argument. But it yeah. could be something like I, I feel that maybe if we just took a break yeah. and, and we come back, Maybe we, we pray about it and then we come back together. Bring the temperature down. And, and, yeah, bring yeah. the temperature down. I think yeah. that's what Mike was talking about. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily saying, you calm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is tempting to do. Yeah. It's very <laughs> tempting to do, <laughs> but not helpful, and like you're saying The most important here. thing is, is if we can put it on us instead of you calm down, right, is like, wow, you know, we get into these discussions and I think sometimes, even if they're the one who is more out of control, I think sometimes in these conversations, I lose control and how much I love you isn't properly represented. And, 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 sort, of, and sort of instead of putting it on them to say, you calm down or you do, take it upon yourself, right, to be the first one to apologize, to be the first one uh, to, um, to show graciousness, I think. Okay, that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, and uh, we're going to need to move along, and I, I'm going to have to calm down and not get too excited because we need to move along. Anyway, uh, stay with us because there is more A Better Us to Come. All right. Missed an episode of A Better Us? No problem. Visit abetterus.tv and click watch, where you can enjoy past episodes and even share them with your friends. Each episode is packed with practical advice to help you and your relationship become a better us. While you're there, click subscribe to receive your free weekly marriage moment email. Also like us on Facebook to receive program previews, news about upcoming events, and inspirational quotes. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. It's been a great show, and it's always so good to hear from Dr. Gary Chapman and Dr. Mike on the mm -hmm, beach. Absolutely. You know, it's been said that true love stands by each other's side on good days and stands even closer on bad days. Yeah. On the surface, that sounds easy and romantic. But if you've been married more than a week, you know those bad days can sneak up on you when you're not ready for them. Right. And your reaction to them can be anything but romantic, right? <laughs> That's true. But what if you learn to take the romance from your dating days and combine it with the maturity of your married life? Mm. That would help build a foundation that will last for decades. And as Dr. Chapman says, even into those decades of marriage, the foundation can be strong and secure and loving, even in the difficult times. Right. Maybe for you, you're still in the first half of your marriage journey, and it's hard to see beyond this current struggle. Mm, that's why it's important to have a vision of what you want your marriage to look like, and then work toward that vision in how you treat each other. Mm. Or maybe you're in that second half of marriage and you long for the vitality and the freshness you once enjoyed together. It's not too late to get it back. Consistently do your part and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. And inviting God into your marriage is the best way to bring freshness. Yeah. He will help you see each other with new eyes and give you the wisdom and patience you need to keep getting better and better. If you'd like someone to pray with you about any of these issues you may be dealing with, our prayer line is on the screen. Why not give it a call? The number is available 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Thanks again for stopping by. And remember, as we like to say, with God, there is always hope to become a better us. Hey friends, we really hope you're enjoying the marriage conversations here with A Better mm -hmm. Us on our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of more helpful marriage videos designed to give you hope and tools to make your marriage better. And you can see just a few options we think you might like here mm -hmm. and here. Enjoy! Oh, and make sure you subscribe by clicking here so you don't miss out on all the great marriage help we have coming your way soon.